So today I thought I would do a quick video giving you some tips on watercolour paint and talk about a few things I wish I knew when I started painting. And it wasn't actually until a few years ago that I found out some of these by trial and error watching videos. So if you're interested and want to save some time, then keep watching. Now what you can see are the main colours that I use in all of my paintings. In the top left, I've got Pyrrhal Scarlet, which is a warm red, a yellow ochre, and Hansa Yellow Light. Top right, two dark blues. I've got an Ultramarine and Phthalo Blue. And I've also got two light blues. And of these two, I tend to use the Cerulean Blue, though the Manganese Blue has a very similar tone and also tends to be cheaper. On the bottom left, I've got Hooker's Green convenient to have though not 100% necessary and I've got a couple of browns on the bottom right burnt sienna and a burnt umber now out of all of these colors there are only three plus one bonus that you ever need you're gonna need a yellow a red and a blue so your primaries plus a brown preferably burnt sienna now that might sound surprising to some but all the other colors are a bonus when you're just starting out and look if you can afford to spend on them then go ahead but it's not necessary in the beginning because it's perfectly adequate just starting out with your primaries you can mix most colors with them and it's not going to cost that much to get the three primaries as well so especially if you're spending on good quality ones you rather get three good quality primaries than a whole set of 12 that are average quality paints. Even these days I stick to my primaries and a few other colors on the side like cerulean blue and burnt sienna. Another tip that I'd mention is if you buy a tube of white gouache you can mix it in with these transparent watercolors and create opaque effects. So that's just another, another usage you can get out of that. One big tip to finish off with is just to make sure that you have at least student or preferably artist grade watercolor paints and 100% cotton paper. It's going to make a really big difference. So I'll go more into paper in one of my next videos. Now I've got a couple of brushes that I use in all of my paintings and the first is this one. It's a two to three dollar brush actually that I've talked about in a couple of my other videos. It's just a calligraphy brush. I can't remember exactly where I picked this up. I think I got it online, shipped to me. Just really durable and holds a lot of water. Also holds a good point which is important if you are looking to cut around shapes and do some fine detailing. So it's got those two characteristics that makes it an essential watercolor brush. A lot of people also buy mop style brushes. You can do that too. They are a bit more expensive though, so it just depends on your budget. One of the things that I do is that I squeeze out all of my paints onto the palette, as you can see. So I buy them all in tubes, squeeze them out. And the reason for that is one, if I paint outside, it makes it more convenient and I don't spill anything. It just is easier to transport. And the second reason is it doesn't lead to any waste. So everything that I put onto that palette gets used up. Whereas if I just squeeze a bit of paint onto the palette, I find that there's always some left over in the end that I don't end up using. And as you guys know, if you're buying artist grade paints, they are pretty expensive. So you don't want to be wasting any of it if you don't need to. You get some really nice greys that end up forming on the leftovers of the palette as well. As you can see, I never clean it and that served me quite well over the years to create some interesting looking paintings. Now I'm going to give you some advice on mixing paints. If you spent time painting in acrylics and oils, you'll find that the paint is used straight from the tube or slightly thinned, but with watercolors, most of the techniques which are used involve dilution of the paint with different proportions of water. So the more water you mix with the paint, the lighter it appears on the paper. It's one important thing to remember. And another thing is that the paint 
also dries lighter and the only way you, you kind of know what proportion of you know water and paint leads to a particular tone when it's dried is really just to practice and practice and you'll see me doing a lot of my art in these sketchbooks and I filled up many many pages of these books just practicing techniques practicing studies of paintings that I'm gonna do and that's gonna prepare you for when you actually start something you know a proper painting later on and who's to say that one of your sketches doesn't turn out to be a really nice work of art too so really recommend it just keep practicing on your sketchbooks if you have any Now what I'm doing, I'm just mixing up a bit of the blue here with a lot of water, I'd say about three quarters, three quarters water and a quarter to a, to a little bit more of paint. And I'm going to do a demonstration just to show you how I'm going to plan out this painting by mixing the paint. And I've got a few sketches here and hopefully this will help demonstrate what I've been talking about. In this sketch I've drawn out a small river scene and I'm planning out here because I want the sky and the water to be lighter than the rest of the painting as well as some parts of the grass, the background, some of the trees. So I'm going to be using thin mixes of paint similar to this puddle of blue that I've mixed up here of about a quarter paint to three quarters water and what I'll do is I'll be covering the entire sketch with this same mix of paint and just getting the basic colors through and this will be essentially your first wash so I'm starting off with a light wash of blue some ultramarine blue on the top and mixing it in with some yellow ochre just making sure that it touches the bottom of where the blue stops all in the same mix of about a quarter paint and three quarters water doing the reflection in the same manner at the bottom here and also adding in some trees letting it mix in with the river as well and while the paper is still wet I like to add in some little waves and disturbances in the water just make sure the paint is thicker than what you've used for the beginning wash and just gonna do some wet wet adding in bits of trees and shrubs and things growing around the river and I've just mixed up a bit of green there with the ultramarine blue yellow I've added in little house in the back and some branches with my number six round brush and really not paying too much attention but just adding in some details to the background and there's a little path at the back as well that I just emphasized dried off that's your first wash and come in with your second wash add in a bit of detail uh, to the structures in the background I've just outlined that house there and I'm just going in with some darker green with these shrubs adding in some trees and bits and pieces here and there darker shrubs and that's pretty much it now just a finishing touch I uh, picked up a bit of white gouache and it's not completely white because it's mixed in with other paints but um, you can also add in just these little highlights like this for a finishing touch and that's a uh, that's your first sketch done the other two I wasn't too happy with but I'll show you just the techniques that I used for this as well so um, starting with a light sky wash it's kind of looks a bit bit greenish but I was trying to get it yellow I've mixed it in with the blue going around the entire building getting the roof in a bit darker as well as the two roofs and the bottom of the building here adding in some clouds wet on wet as well 
It's colouring the right side of the building, a very, these two little towers, a little darker, indicate the light source to the left. You know, it's always really good to just keep experimenting on your sketchbook because you're not under any pressure to get things right the first time and you want to use that to actually trial all the different techniques and things that you wouldn't normally do as well. Now moving on to the third sketch, making a light yellow wash. The building's a little bit lighter as well. So I move down to the foreground. I'm just gonna add some blue and cooler tones. Just cool it down a little bit. Give that a quick dry. And now I'm gonna go over the silhouette of the buildings in a darker color. I've used a purple here. You want to try using complementary colors, adding in bits of detail and some of the shadows of that building. And um, what you can do as well, right at the very end, just add in a bit of dry brush, pick up a bit of darker paint, dry off the brush, and just drag it across the areas that you want to indicate windows, doors, stuff like that. So we're at the end of the video now. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, or if you just have any feedback, any suggestions for next time, please leave a comment below. Share it with your friends if you think they'd be interested as well. And also remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content and also would like to support me. Thanks for watching.